Hello and welcome to Magical Diary. I'm RMP792, and yes, I'm doing another visual novel. Sue me. So, my knowledge of this game going in is limited to basically nothing. Yeah, I had a quick flick through the Steam reviews and that's about it. Though from what I hear, this one does come across a little bit as uh, Harry Potter fan fiction. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, everything looks fine. Classic visual novel, so not a massive amount in the way of things there. Right. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. Alright, new game. Mary Sue. That feels like an obvious gag. And I believe you are limited to playing as female in this, which, yeah, I don't have a problem with because I tend to do that on purpose. So, need a name. And if anybody can tell me what I'm referencing with that name, I'll be very impressed. Yeah, we've only got a few styles, but... Uh, okay, that hair is spectacular but ridiculous. I'll probably end up going with that one. Yeah, that's all the way around the loop again. So, yeah, I think I like the ridiculous one. I, I like the fact that it doesn't even slightly limit you to colours that make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking that one personally. Yo, that's terrifying. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that one. Slider for eye colour rather than... Ah, let's go with blue. Some of those are kind of creepily pale. Body type one or two. Ah, I'd stick with two, I'm gonna say. I'm quite tall, so I tend to stick with taller designs. Okay then. <coughs> it all started about three years ago, on my 13th birthday. I was playing tag in the back garden with my friends, but when I tried to jump out the way of the girl who was chasing me, I jumped so high that I flew all the way over the hedge. At first I couldn't believe it was real. No one else could either. Within a few minutes, they'd all convinced themselves that nothing unusual had happened. Then the next day, a strange old woman showed up at my doorstep to offer me the choice for my future. And now, here I am, 16, and on my way to Iris Academy, an actual school for magic. The school lies in a hidden valley in the Green Mountains, about 150 miles from my home in New Hampshire. My parents drove me out here, but we've already said our goodbyes. I asked them to drop me off at the outskirts of the school grounds so I could walk the rest of the way on my own. I knew Dad would cry and make a fuss over me before letting me go, and I didn't want my new classmates to see me for the first time looking like that. Actually, I'm surprised Dad agreed. He's always been a little overprotective. Maybe he's finally recognised that I'm not a little kid anymore. Anyway, it means I have to carry my own suitcases, which contained all I have to my name for the next nine months. Not many clothes, because we'll be wearing school uniforms all the time, but I have some books and pictures of my friends and family and decorations for my new room. There it is, up ahead! The campus looks more like a very posh boarding school than a home for wizards and witches. Pretty buildings, lots of trees and wide open spaces. Summer's still lingering here, the leaves haven't yet started to turn. I walk a little faster, feeling slightly too warm for this long robe and cape. Flower beds and arches stretch out around me, so many doors and windows, and they all look the same. There are three residential halls for girls and three for boys. I've been accepted to horse hall, which is for adventurous girls, whatever that means. The other two girl halls are butterflies, who are probably girly girls, and the snakes. I'm not sure who would want to be a snake. I'd much rather be a horse. Unfortunately, I'm not sure exactly where Horse Hall is. I have a letter about freshman orientation. Oh, where did I put it? I look down at my suitcases while I walk, trying to remember which pocket I stuck the letter into, when suddenly... <laughs> I bump into someone. Oops. Sorry. He's an older man in the school robes, with no hall symbol on them, which means he's probably a professor. This is not a good first impression. Uh, 
Sorry, sir. A new student, I see. And what might your name be? He has a lovely dark voice and a rich and refined British accent, and he doesn't seem to be too angry with me. I relax a little. Chandlin Cressida, sir. I, I just got here. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be. My voice trails off as I notice he's no longer looking at me. Instead, he's paging through the large book he was carrying. Miss Cressida, is it? Wild Seed. Hmm. How unsurprising. Wild? More than likely a complete waste of my time. You have no idea how much you've been given, and you will throw it all away. He scribbles something into the book, and then slams it shut. Ten demerits. Not a promising start. Pay more attention to your studies than you do when you are walking, Miss Cressida, or you'll find yourself expelled from this academy before the new year. With a snap of his wrist, he wraps his cape around him and stalks away. I haven't even started school yet, and already one of my teachers hates me. Well, that sucks. <clears throat> After a bit of looking around, I found the way into the girls' dormitories and located my hall. There are nine doors in this hall, only one of which is labelled bathroom. If each bedroom has at least two girls in it, then I hope it's a big bathroom. My own letter informed me that I would have two roommates, but it didn't tell me their names or anything else about them. I haven't seen anyone wearing a horse insignia. All I can do is find my room and wait for them to show up. Here it is, room three. I open the door and pick up my suitcases. I walk inside. I find a fairly ordinary looking bedroom. No skulls or drifty candles or black light posters on the walls. No incense or crystals anywhere. Unless they just haven't had time to unpack yet. A girl who had been standing on one of the beds stands up. Um, hello? You're a horse. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Hi, I'm, I'm Janlin. Are you my roommate? One of them. I'm Helen. That's Virginia's bed, but she went out to talk to somebody. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? Virginia? The, the state, I mean. Not sure where Virginia the girl is from. I tilt my head. You don't have much of a southern accent. It's not that far south, and my family wasn't from there. What about you? New Hampshire, not too far from here. Are all those books yours? Yeah. There aren't any computers here, so I brought my old encyclopedias. And those textbooks for the classes I would have been taking this year of my other school if I hadn't left. You must be a really good student. Not really. I, I probably won't even open them. But I didn't know what I'd need, and I, I didn't want to need something and not have it. Those books are everything I could find out about magic. The, the real kind, I mean, now that I know it's real. Yeah, isn't it great? We're going to be witches, just like in the movies. Oh good, you're a wild seed too. What does wild seed mean? It means your parents weren't magic, so you're like a wild flower. She holds out her hand for me to shake. Me and my family's all magical, so I always knew I'd be a witch. I'm Virginia. She has a pretty strong grip. Janlin. Pleasure to meet you. Is it a problem being wild? I met a professor and he was sort of rude about it. A professor? Shaggy black hair, big nose. Yeah, I, I sort of bumped into him. Ah, so that guy's our Snape analogy, gotcha. Oh no, you'll be on Grabby's blacklist. The Professor Grabs Girls? No, that's his name, Professor Grabiner. He hates me. He hates everybody, so it doesn't make much difference. Don't worry about it, nobody cares if you're a born witch or not. Well, not really. And everybody's scared of Grabby, he's a monster. William warned me about him. Who's William? My big brother. B bigger brother. He's a senior. Donald's a freshman like us. They're in Wolf Hall. But enough about boys. What sports do you play? What do you like? I like softball, but I'm, I'm better at volleyball. Good, strong arms. Me, I prefer soccer. What about you, Janlin? Um, I guess I'm mostly best at track. I like to run. Your legs, her arms, and my fight spirit. We're the total package. Go horses! Are there sports teams for wizards here? Not exactly. There's bounders, but that's not a real sport. But there is a gym, and we can start our own sports teams if we have to. Right, Janlin? I... I guess. Sorry, sorry. I'm rolling you over, aren't I? I'll let you unpack. Come on, Ellen. I'll introduce you to my brothers. Huh? Oh, okay. 
probably all in pack. Okay, I'll see you later. Don't forget, Janlin, orientation is tomorrow, and you'll get to see old Grabby again. Great. I guess I better start putting things away. Everything moves quickly here, and I don't intend to get left behind. Tomorrow I start learning magic. Morning assembly. At 9am on Monday morning, all the freshmen are gathered in the gymnasium, wearing capes and robes just like me. But they're not completely like me. One boy has furry ears and a long fluffy tail. One girl has glittering wings. And that girl looks like a vampire. Is that what it means to be born a witch, being something other than human? Virginia looks normal, but she could still be hiding under her robes and... No, that's just silly. The muttering and shuffling of the students drops as someone steps up to the podium. Why, hello, my little flower buds. Welcome to Iris Academy. I start to applaud, but freeze as I realise that no one else is. Then Virginia beside me picks up the clapping loudly, and soon the whole room is cheering. The witch holds up her hands, and the room settles back into silence. My name is Professor Potsdam, and I will be one of your instructors in the ways of magic. For some of you, this is the beginning of an adventure such as you never imagined. For others, this is only the next step in a journey you have been expecting all of your lives. At Iris Academy, we teach spelling using the pentachromatic symbol. Red magic is forceful, but not necessarily violent. Blue is the colour of transformation and change. Green is the colour of life, and the world of plants and animals. White magic affects the mind and spirit, and black magic is contained within physical objects. Your palette should contain at least a few dabs of every magical colour, but it's a beautiful painting doesn't need every shade. It's style that matters. You all have different strengths, different talents, and here at Iris Academy we embrace that diversity and tailor your education to your needs. Choose your schedule to focus your personal talents. Don't try and become a reflection of your classmates. Follow your own star, wherever it may lead you. That is the way in which you are all alike. You each have your own future, and I know you'll make us proud. Her starry-eyed way of speaking reminds me a little bit of my old school's guidance counsellor, but she certainly seems nicer than Professor Grabner. I wonder which classes she teaches. You have been divided into halls to help you make friends with classmates who share similar interests. For the girls, we have the adventurous horses, the charming butterflies, and the mysterious snakes. Each group claps as the name is called. The horse is louder than the others, or perhaps that's just because I'm sitting with more of them. For the boys, we have the daring wolves, the elegant falcons, and the eldritch toads. I'm not sure what eldritch means, but toads sounds even worse than snakes. I hope you'll all become good friends, not just in each hall and not just in your year, but throughout the whole academy. But most importantly, I hope that you'll get to know and trust your roommates, so that by the end of the year, you're able to work as a team for your final exams. And I know you're all looking forward to your exams, yes? The audience predictably groans. For testing purposes, your instructors will regularly set you practical challenges in the school dungeons. The school has dungeons? Each task has many possible solutions. You will need to make creative use of the spells you have chosen to learn, so think ahead about what might be useful and how. Okay, are you all ready for magic? Open up your diaries and begin penciling in your schedule. I need to choose which classes to attend this week. There are classes for each kind of magic, plus general studying, which sounds boring, and gym class, which I've always liked. I can also schedule free time to relax and unwind. For most of my life, my classes have been planned out for me by my school. It wasn't until last year that I got to make any choices at all. Cantonese, French or Spanish, physics, chemistry or biology. You went to a school that made you choose which of the three sciences you did. Oh, oh that's that's pretty bad. My school made us do all three. <clears throat> Still, everyone had to have the same number of classes, and they all started and ended at the same time. You couldn't get out of it. If I can choose whatever schedule I want here, what would ha really happen if I never went to class at all? Would they really get, let me get away with that? Hmm. What should I do this week? Okay then. I feel like I should have a decent grounding in the various magic schools. So let's start with 
red class, blue class, green class, black class, white class. Really sort of figure out what each one is. And then after that we can uh, go from there. <laughs> Activity, red magic. Uh oh, this is one of his classes. Get to your seats, hurry up, no chatter. In this class, carelessness might cost you your fingers. He wouldn't really cut off students' fingers, would he? Here you will be learning the seductive art of red magic, the evocation and control of energy. With this power, you might summon a breeze, light a fire, or call a distant object to your hand. I say that it is seductive, but not because of the power itself, but because simple minds prefer simple solutions. Blast your enemies with lightning, tear buildings apart with earthquakes, let the world around you burn! Fall victim to such vulgar fantasies and you'll leave yourself vulnerable to those capable of creative thought. There are many approaches that direct force cannot defend against. He snaps his fingers in the air. One inattentive moment and you lose control of the forces you have summoned. And after that, you'll only be as remembered as an unpleasant stain on the walls. He rubs his hands together and gives a nasty smile. Now for your lessons. Success. Gained two red magic skills. Blue magic. Uh oh, this is another one of his classes. Mill about all you like, it's not it's your own time you're wasting. I have no objects to f objections to failing the lot of you at the next exam. A flurry of robes as students scramble for seats. Here you will be learning the subtle art of blue magic. Well, at least some of you will. I thoroughly expect this subject to go over some of your heads. Blue is the colour of change, that is, altering what is already there. Not creating, not destroying. It is commonly used in conjunction with other magical styles in order to perform alchemical, transmu tr alchemical transmutations and other alterations of essence. Blue magic can also be used to change the effects of an existing spell, to cast or dispel illusions, or to change locations without movement through the intervening space. For a skilled blue magician, reality is fluid. All things can be changed, yet few minds are capable of grasping the true range of possibilities. We'll see what you're worth. Ooh, three blue magic, but three stress. Green magic? When I arrive at the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Hello, little seedlings. Please take your seats. Today you're going to learn about green magic, the magic of life. This is a very important skill for any witch or wizard to have, especially when you get to be a certain age. Your body is a garden to be cared for. With proper tending, it could last you for centuries. Slowly, carefully, you must encourage your subjects to grow in the direction you prefer. Be patient, and the rose vines will lose their thorns and twine around you. One of the students makes a scoffing noise. If it can heal, it can kill. What happens if you force it to grow the wrong way quickly? Why would you want to do that? Because you don't like the life in front of you? Well, if that's your plan, I can look forward to working for you on a very long time. Life has its own flow. You can change it, but the harder you push, the more energy you'll need. To cause a great change in an instant takes immense power. So you'd better get started. Three green magic and three stress. Black magic. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I arrive in the classroom, feeling slightly apprehensive. Black magic? Will there be zombies? Good morning. Has everyone got a smock or an apron? There are plenty at the back. Aprons? What are we going to do with those? For those of you who are new to our magical traditions, I should reassure you that black magic has nothing to do with death or evil. Oh. There's no such thing as evil magic, there's only magic. The bad and the good come from how you choose to use it. Black is the colour of weight, solidarity and permanence. Black magic is the magic of enhancement in the physical form. All wands and things like that are created with black magic. This does mean that cursed items are enchanted with black magic as well. That might be how people got the wrong idea. A pale girl with dark hair raises her hand. Yes, Raven? Since you're enchanting matter, and bones of matter, you could use black magic to animate a skeleton, right? That's an interesting question. You could certainly enchant a skeleton to hold a spell, or react in some way. You could set a skull to chatter its jaw when any came near, like an alarm. 
But to make something that could walk around and act on its own, you'd need to bind a spirit to it, and that calls for another kind of magic. We will get to combine techniques later in the year. Now, one of the easiest ways to infuse magic into a physical substance is to mix things together with liquids, potions, and that's what we'll be starting with. Always remember to wear a smock or an apron, potion stains can ruin your uniform. Oh, I only got one point of black magic now. I'm assuming it's at least partially randomised. When I arrive in the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Are there literally only two teachers in this place? <laughs> Good morning, Starshines. You'll need to sit down before we can start, but take your time, relax, get comfortable. That's very important when working with this particular style of magic. Hearing her work, I yawn and stretch before I settle into my seat. To some people, white is the absence of colour, a blank canvas. In the non-magical world, white is a complete spectrum, all colours combined into one. In some ways, you could think of white magic as either of these things. White magic is the tool you use to access the spiritual realm. Ghosts and dreams, creatures from other planes, the thoughts of those around you. With white magic, you can experience and communicate with things that are normally hidden. There is one thing I need to warn you about. Some people have used, tried to use white magic to control minds and spirits instead of asking them for their aid. Don't do it. You will regret it. Now, shall we go on with the lesson? What sort of warning is that? Does she mean that it won't work, or that we'll be expelled, or arrested, or our brains will melt, or what? Oh, maybe she'll tell us more later. Another white magic point, and another point in stress. After dinner, I'm walking back to my room, when I notice that the door is already open. I peek through the gap to see who's inside. It's Ellen. She's folding up some clothing, probably putting the laundry away. Wait a minute, that's Virginia's dress as she's opening. Why is she rumming her doing around and our roommate's stuff? I haven't made a sound. She doesn't know I'm here yet. If you want to know something, why not just ask? What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Just, um, tidying up a little. Yes, but isn't that Virginia's stuff? Yes? Why are you tidying up her things? Because she doesn't do it herself? She's making you be her maid. No! At this point, Virginia returns to our shared room. Hey you guys, what's up? Why are you making poor Ellen into your slave? Huh? She's not! Okay, just what is going on here? I shake my head. Um, I think I'm obviously confused about something. She saw me putting away some of your clothes. Oh, is it you who's been doing that? I'm sorry, I just I hate messy rooms. No, it's, it's my fault. I'm not very good at picking up after myself. Mom always does it for me at home. Still, I didn't think it was too bad yet. We've only been here a week. Oh, I hate having things be out of place. It makes me feel nervous. I don't know if I can make things perfect all the time. We all have to live together for a year without driving each other crazy. How can we work this out? I, I'm kind of down with that plan. Yo, she likes it to be obsessive. Do you like cleaning? No. I was asking Ellen. I don't mind doing it. That's not what I asked. Do you enjoy it? Is it fun for you? Not really. It's just better than staying in a messy room. Okay, so how about this? We got a weekly spending allowance here, right? Why don't you pay Ellen to do a share of your cleaning for you? Pay me? Well, she shouldn't expect you to work for free. What if I want to keep my money? Then you could learn to clean for yourself, or find some other way to pay her. If you hate cleaning and you're used to having someone else pick up after you, it might make sense to keep things that way. Ellen's better at cleaning so she can do it, but if she's helping you, she should get something in exchange, then everybody's happy, right? Well, if it's okay with you, yeah, I guess. I'm not sure if it's a perfect compromise, but it's hard to reach a perfect agreement between three different people. I think that went quite well. I'm awakened early on Saturday morning by a tap on the door, followed by a faint hissing sound. What's going on? I stumble out of bed to find that three envelopes have been pushed under the door of our room, each marked with one of our names. Hey hey, money's here! Each envelope contains five dollars, the weekly spending allowance for Iris Academy students. If it's our money, why can't they just give it to us all at once? I guess they don't trust us not to spend it all at once and then run out and complain. 
Well, that might teach people to plan ahead. Yeah, this way it is still teaches. This way still teaches people to plan ahead. If you really want to buy anything cool, you've got to save up. But you're missing the important part. It's Saturday, and that means a trip to the mall. I didn't think you were a shopaholic. I'm not, but it's great to get out and look at something other than school for a while, isn't it? Also, they have ice cream and penny candy and really big cinnamon cookies and... You get the idea. Since I've been there before, I can show you guys around. What about studying? Ah, you have plenty of time for that during the week, right, Janelin? Sure, I'd love to go to the mall with you. Great! Ellen? I guess it's okay. But you ought to have a good breakfast before you look at the ice cream. Yes, mother. Students are lining up outside the school, waiting for a free seat in one of the shuttle vans to travel between here and the local shopping centre. Come on, we can ride together. Wait a minute. What is it? We're still in uniform. So? Why don't people stare at us because we're all wearing capes? Nah. Just act natural, it's no big deal. But it's nowhere near Halloween. Since the teachers aren't saying anything, I suppose this is what we're supposed to do. The mall is not very large or very crowded, at least where I'm standing. Witches and wizards easily outnumber shoppers in ordinary clothes, but no one reacts to the sight. I guess if students come here all the time, they get used to it. Okay, that place does coffee and pastries and they have fresh fruit. Uh, that one does baked potatoes, there's a gift shop, there's the cafe. Are all these stores magical? Ah, there's only one magic shop here. They sell wands and stuff. I'm going to get a chocolate croissant. What about you? Well, I feel like I should probably check out the magic store, but... Mm, okay, I'm a Let's Player and critic who's obsessed with gaming. Okay, let's be good and go to the magic store. With Virginia's vague directions in mind, I sat out in search of the magic store. This branch of the mall looks like a dead end. There's only one shop front. It's blacked out with a coming soon sign on the door. But as I get closer, a patch of wall blurs and shimmers to reveal a second door. Marked with a star. Marked with a star? <clears throat> Marked with a star. Marvelous magical accoutrements. Ooh, cool. Glasses. Wacky glasses. Okay, what note do you need a sextant for? Uh, okay, there's some interesting bits and bobs here. I can't really afford anything good yet. But, uh, let's have a look at the glasses. Adding an air of sophistication, as well as in making easier to read the fine print of old and faded magical tomes. Smart plus five, cost ten. Well, I could do with being more intelligent. Yeah, I'd buy the glasses. You purchase glasses. In order to gain the benefits for item, you'll have to wear it. You can access the equipment screen to change what you're wearing at the end of the week. Okay, well I'm now completely and utterly broke, so I think I'm done shopping. Out of curiosity, I just want to look at the halo. Perfect circle of gold, polished and enhanced with spiritual energy. Ah, so that's 35 magic. Well, I'm broke, so I can't. <laughs> so yes, I'm assuming lots of these things do different stuff, so that's probably good for... Ah, okay, so that's strength plus 5 and red magic plus 30. Wow. So if you save up some good stuff, you can obviously really... Yeah, you can really boost your magical skills, which is good. Right, that to me seems like a perfectly acceptable point to end this video. So I will say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.